in this particular lesson, we want to spend some time talking about um, the force that can be experienced, right, on a current current wire. So, so hear me out. We establish that when current is flowing through a wire, right, once current is flowing through a wire, there's going to be a magnetic field around it. Good? Now, the thing now is, what if I were to take a current carrying wire and place it in between a magnet? So let's imagine that this side of the magnet is the north side, and then now we have another side of a magnet right here, which is the south side. What you're going to realize is that the wire is going to experience a force, right? Now, naturally, if, if I have a north pole set up here and a south pole set up here, you would expect that you would have field lines coming from the, the magnet. You would have field lines coming from the magnet, right? Going straight ahead like this. This is when you have uh, parallel field lines, magnetic field lines passing from one pole to the next pole. So this is typically how the magnetic field um, is. Now, if I were to have some type of wire that is carrying a current placed in between a magnetic field, then that wire is going to move. It's going to experience a force. Now, what we're going to look at today, a part of today's lesson, is to predict where that wire is going to move, right? So that, that, that's one of the things that we're going to look at. So let's see what the, 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 the information here is saying. So first, it says that when a current carrying wire is placed in a magnetic field, it experiences a force due to the interaction of its magnetic field and the external field. Now, it says that the direction of this force can be determined using what we call the Fleming's left-hand rule. Right? Fleming's left-hand rule. Right? Fleming's left-hand rule. We're going to talk about what that means. Now, it says that in which the first finger second finger and the thumb are at right angles to each other. I'll show you a picture of what we mean. But before I show you that picture, I want you to understand that the first finger is your pointing finger, what you call your index finger. Now, that first finger is denoted as your magnetic field. So wherever your first finger points, that is telling you the magnetic field. And the magnetic field that we're talking about is the magnetic field from the external um, source, meaning that it's the magnetic field from the magnet. From the magnet. And you'll see what I mean eventually. So that is the magnetic field. And so with your first finger, we can denote it as the B finger. Now the second finger, which is your middle finger, right that one is used to show you the direction of a current right so as we, as we can imagine that the wire is going to have current flowing through it if you know the direction of the current and you know the direction of the magnetic field from the bar magnet then you can predict the direction of the wire in terms of how it is going to move based on the force that is acting on it now it says that the thumb right is used to show the direction of the force on the wire or we can say the resultant motion of the wire which means where exactly is the wire going to move now one of the things that we must remember is that whenever we're dealing with the flow of current in this scenario right we're we're looking at the flow of current using the conventional current rule where it says that current flows from positive to negative 
we know or we should know by now that that is not the real way that current flows. But in this case, we're going to work with it to say that wherever the current is flowing, it's flowing from positive terminal to negative. Now, sometimes you're going to get scenarios where we talk about the flow of electron or the electron flow. If, if, if the conventional current is flowing from positive to negative, then the electron flow is from negative to positive, right? So it's like, in this, in this sense, the real way how current is flown is, 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 is by way of using electrons. And electrons are negatively charged, so they will be moving from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. So that's how elect like electricity really flows. But we just come up with the whole conventional flow of current that we're going to use just so that current flows from positive to negative. Now, in this scenario, right, the reason why I highlight this, right, this, this section here, the whole conventional um, flow of current, if, if you get a problem and the problem did not tell you what kind of charge they said that current is flowing, then you're going to stick with the conventional flow of current. If they told you that the charge is an electron, then you have to think about the direction in which that current, that, that, that electron is flowing, which is opposite of the conventional flow of current. So if, if, if conventional current is going this way, right, then now the flow of electron will be going the opposite way. So, that, so, that, so, that, so that's the difference between the two. So you have to pay attention to whether it tells you if it's a flow of electron or if it's a flow of any random charge. If it's talking about any charge overall, then we just use the conventional flow of current. Now the right the the, the Fleming's um, left hand rule, as the word as as it as it indicates left hand, it means that you're going to use your left hand. Now there are certain ways in which your left hand has to be positioned. Now your your thumb must form a right angle between your second finger, right? Then your I, I, I said that incorrect. Your, fur, your thumb must form a right angle between the, the first finger, right? Then your first finger must form a right angle between the second finger. So at all costs, each of your um, thumb, finger, thumb, the first finger, and the second finger, they, they will have a right angle. To each other right so that is the scenario that's how we have to position our hand in order for us to understand this now if we look at this diagram if we look at this diagram right we know that magnetic fields from a magnet move from north to south so if i were to go ahead and draw uh, my magnetic field this is the direction my magnetic fields are pointing towards. So what that tells me, it tells me that my first finger, which is called my B finger, must be pointing in that direction. As you can see right here, it's pointing like that. So it just shows us that that's the magnetic field. Then based on this, the, the current is flowing in this direction. Because the current is flowing in this direction, my second finger must be pointing in the same way in which the current is flowing. Now, so from this, automatically, you will realize that your thumb points upward. So because your thumb is now pointing upward, it tells us that the wire right here is going to experience a force upward. So the wire is going to move upward. Good? So that is one example here. Now, here's another a viewpoint of this. Our current is going into the paper, right? Our, man, our external magnetic field. So this is the external magnetic field that we're talking about. External magnetic, magnetic field. That's our external magnetic field. 
that now is going from left to right, as we can imagine. Good? Now, because our current is going into the paper, then your second finger must be pointing inwards to the paper. And your first finger must be pointing from left to right. So when you, when you do that, you're going to realize that your, your, your thumb is going to point downwards. By pointing downwards, it just tells us that this wire is going to experience a force downwards. Wonderful. So I hope that you, you catch on to that, right? Now, we have a, a particular experiment that we can set up. Right, and one of your labs will entail this type of thing, right, to pretty much investigate the force that is experienced on a wire, right. And I must point out something to you. In this experiment, for for you to for you to experience maximum um, force, right, to experience maximum force. Maximum force, right? The wire, the wire must be placed, right? At a 90 degree angle to the magnetic field, to the magnetic field. And we'll look at why we say that eventually. So we're just saying that the wire here must be, must form a right angle. So right here between the magnetic fields, it has to be a right angle position here. All right? So that's what we mean. Now, this experiment, we can use it to investigate several things. One of the things that we can use this experiment to do we can, we can use this experiment to find the magnetic field strength or the magnetic flux density of the bar magnet, right? With this experiment, what we do is that we get a scale, right, or, a, or some balance. Now, with this balance, we're going to set up our magnet as such, right? And obviously set up our wires so that you know the wire is passing through the magnetic field and obviously you're going to need a power supply you're going to need either a battery or some power unit now once current is flowing through this wire right before current starts flowing through the wire i must say something that you know once you put something on a scale, right? You're going to see a reading come on that scale. You could do two things. You could zero the scale, right? You could zero the scale so that you don't have any values on the scale. And then once you allow current to flow through this wire, what you, you will observe is that there's going to be a force that is exerted on the wire. Now that force is going to is going to push down itself on the scale. So by pushing itself down on the scale, you will get a value. Now this value obviously is going to be in grams because scales are used to measure mass. So while you're measuring the mass, right, we can actually find out the force that the wire is exerting by way of finding the weight, the weight of that, um, that mass that is acting down, which is actually a force acting down on the, on the scale. We know that um, weight is equal to mass times gravity, gravity constant. So if you know the mass and you know gravity constant, then you, you basically find, find, find the force that the wire is experiencing. 
So that is the easiest way for us to measure the force using this experiment. And then now following that, we're going to use some equation and some graph to, to really investigate or to find out the other things. All right? We'll look at the equation eventually. But this is just an experiment that we, we have used to investigate certain things. Now, this is just a typical animation of what is happening here, right? Pertaining to um, current flowing in between a magnetic field. We said that that wire is going to experience a force downwards. Okay. So as I was stating earlier on, that we can find the magnetic flux density of the magnet, right? Whenever we have this scenario here. Now. Our magnetic field strength from this entire um, aspect or this entire um, concept here, we can now redefine what we refer to as our magnetic field strength or our magnetic flux density. We can say that our magnetic flux density is defined as a force per unit length, per unit current on a, car on a, on a current carrying wire that is placed perpendicular to the field. And we said that this is our, um, our unit, Tesla, right? So, so now we have another way in which we can define the magnetic field strength. Magnetic field strength B is defined as the force per unit length. And the length that we're talking about is the length of the wire that is passing through the magnetic field per unit current on a current carrying, current carrying conductor that is placed perpendicular to the magnetic field. So you can define it from this standpoint as well in terms of magnetic field strength. Okay? And of course, the unit is Tesla. This is what the definition is telling us. The definition is telling us that our magnetic flux density is equal to the force divided by uh, current times the length. So if I wanted to find my B field, I would need to know the force that is experienced on the wire, which I could have used the experiment around there to find that. If I know the current flowing through the wire and the length of the wire that is, that is um, passing through the magnetic field, then I could simply and easily find out my, uh, my, my, my magnetic field. Now, we can also rearrange this equation to one where it says that the force experience on a current wire is equal to the magnetic field produced by the magnet multiplied by the current multiplied by the length. So by way of just, re just manipulating this, then you can clearly see that um, force is equal to B I L. Now, if we go back to our left-hand rule, right? Remember we said that the term is used to indicate the force. We said that the first finger is used to represent B, right? The second finger is used to represent the current I. From this, you can come up with an acronym, FBI, which you can use to remember the whole Fleming's left-hand rule. So your first, your, your thumb, right, represents force, first finger, B field, second thing of current. So this is the equation that you will use whenever you want to find out certain information. All right? Mind you that based on this equation here, right, it clearly shows us that the force is directly proportional to the magnetic field. So if I were to use a magnetic field that is much larger um, for this magnet, if I use a very strong magnet, right, then automatically it's going to result in a much larger force being experienced on the wire. Similarly, if I increase the current flowing through the wire, right, and keeping all the other things constant, if I increase my current flowing through the wire, right, 
that is also going to result in a much larger force, providing that the BP is constant and the length is constant. Good. Also, the more wire I have passing through the magnetic field, then it's the more force that my wire is going to also experience because the more length passing through the, the, through the magnetic field is just telling us that you have more external magnetic field to interact with the current wire, hence you will have a much greater force acting down on it. So these are certain things that we ought to, to be aware of in terms of what we're talking about, um, you know, magnetic fields and the, the whole fact that the force can, the force is directly proportional to all of these three variables, right? Now, one of the things that we, 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 we should uh, highlight is the fact that what if my current wire is, is not placed um, perpendicularly to the direction of the magnetic field? What if you slot the wire, right? then clearly the wire is not going to experience um, maximum force. Remember we said that the wire will experience maximum force when it is placed perpendicularly to the magnetic field, right? When the wire is at an angle, it's going to experience less force. In order for us to, to quantify that or to make that correction, we have to now introduce sine Theta. So F is equal to B I L sine theta, where theta is the angle that is formed between the wire and the magnetic field. Right? So in, in, in saying all of this, right, it is just telling us that at different angles that the wire, if the angle, if the wire is positioned at different angles, then it will also affect the force that is experienced. If, if my angle was placed at, um, at um, 90 degrees, sine of 90, right, is equal to 1. Sine of 90 is equal to 1. Now, sine of any other angle, that is going, to, is going to be a much smaller value, right? So then you realize that it's going to decrease the, the, um, the force. So just remember that once it is placed perpendicular to the to the magnetic field, then you'll have maximum force being experienced on the wire. Okay. Now, one of the things that you will come across seeing in questions is when you have two current wires placed side by side each other. Right? So in this case, if you have two current wires that are placed parallel to each other, right? Both of them are going to experience a force. It says that if the current, right, um, is flowing in the same direction, the force is attractive. So if the current is, is um, flowing in the same direction, you realize that the force becomes attractive. Good. It says that if the current is flowing in the opposite direction, the force is a repulsive force. So that is something very important for us to um, pay attention to and be aware of, right? Because multiple choice questions, I've seen multiple choice questions related to these things, right? We're going to look at this in greater depth. But mind you, if I wanted to find my magnetic field, in, in this first wire here, then I would obviously, because it's a straight wire, I would use my right-hand grip rule. The right-hand grip rule would have predicted to say that my magnetic field is moving in an anti-clockwise way. So this is how my magnetic field is, is actually moving. Um, right? So my magnetic field is moving around like this. Now, because both wires are placed beside each other, what you have to realize is that the magnetic fields are going to interact with each other, right? And due to that interaction, or in other words, due to the fact that one wire 
is placed within another wire's magnetic field, then this particular wire is going to exert a force on this wire. It can either be an attractive force or a repulsive force. Mind you, the second wire is also exerting a magnetic field on, on this wire as well, where the magnetic field is cutting across it right here, right? We can use our um, left hand, Fleming's left hand rule to predict certain things, and we're going to look at that in greater detail. But I just wanted to show you that by way of, um, of, mapping out your magnetic field right you will realize that they are going in opposite direction here the one magnetic field is going like this the other magnetic field uh, on this wire is going the opposite way right so we're going to look at what causes these wires to be repulsive and attractive clearly obviously takes into account our fleming's left hand rule now it says, let us consider two wires, X and Y, right, um, that are at right angles to the plane of a plane, of a, of, a, of, a, of a paper. It says, since current X is carrying a current I1, a magnetic field is created around it. The second wire, Y, I'll show you in a minute what we mean, um, is situated in, a, in this magnetic field. Since wire Y is um, carrying a current I2, it experiences a force F. It says that the direction of the force can be determined using the Fleming left hand rule. Now, this is a very important part that you must, you must be, pay, pay attention to. It says according to Newton's um, um, third law, right, we know that Newton's third law speaks to um, equal and opposite forces, right? So what you realize is that because um, the, the wire X is causing a force on wire Y, wire Y is going to exert an equal and opposite force to wire X, all right? So there's going to be an equal and opposite force acting on wire x and i'm going to show you what i mean so this is the scenario right that we're talking about good and we're saying that one wire x wire y rather so this is wire y this is wire x once they are experiencing um once one wire is experiencing a force right if, if the force experienced on wire, wire, wire two, or wire Y, I should say, is going like this, then wire X is going to exert an equal and opposite force. The best, the best way to look at this is from this standpoint, right? So at this point, our current is going into the paper, all right? The current is going into the paper, so we use an X. So we're just looking at what is happening there. So our current is flowing inward. So this is the current flowing um, through wire, wire X, right? And if we use our right hand grip rule, right? Thumb pointing inward to the paper and your four fingers curl into your palm in a clockwise position. So clearly you can see that this is how the magnetic field lines are moving. Now at this point where wire wire uh, Y is wire Y is positioned in that magnetic field of wire X. So at this location we can say that the magnetic field being a vector quantity, right? This is how the magnetic field is behaving. It's, it's pointing directly downward, right? It's pointing directly downward. So if I were to say, where is the magnetic field um, for wire X when wire Y is interacting with it? 
it would obviously be at this point right here. Right here, that is where we're, we're talking about in terms of the magnetic field. So your magnetic field is moving around like this because we're considering it from the very instant, this magnetic, from, from the very instant the wire is interacting with the magnetic field. Then you would just draw a vector downwards here to represent that that is the direction um, the magnetic field is moving um, when the wire is interacting with the with wire x magnetic field having said that right we can we can then look at this to say uh we can now consider um the whole fleming's left hand rule so i know the direction of the magnetic field right so your first finger using the fleming's left hand rule must be pointing downward good so if you grab your fleming's um if you grab your left hand your your first finger must be pointing downward like this then remember we said that the current in wire y is going into the paper so it therefore means that your second finger must be pointing inwards inwards the paper Note that once you have established your magnetic field, which is going downwards like this, right? Then that finger has to remain in that position. If you take that finger out of that position, then it, 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 it's going to be incorrect. You have to maintain that position. So quite often, you will just need to just rotate your arm, right? And then once you do that, once you have establish that your current is going your magnetic field is going downward and your current is going inward then clearly you're going to realize that your thumb is pointing towards this side your thumb is going to point towards that side so once we have identified um one current one force i should say once you have identified one of the forces then the second wire right which is wire x in this case, is going to exert an equal and opposite force. You understand? Right? But I must let you know that this force that the, that wire that wire Y experience is the force caused by wire X. So this force that is experienced on wire Y is caused by wire X. Now the force on wire X is caused by wire y so there's a little bit of flip-flop going on right there you understand so so that is something that you have to pay attention to so clearly if you wanted to to show the direction where the the, the, the force on wire um x is going to be then because we said that once something is experiencing a force according to newton's third law right then that thing is going to exert an equal and opposite force to it. So hence, this is the reason why you have both forces going in inwards together. So it's like the wires are moving towards each other. You understand? Causing what we call a force of attraction. Now, we can do certain calculations related to these problems, right? So what if I wanted to find the, the force exerted on on um wire wire um wire y right then firstly i would need to know the magnetic field caused by wire x because remember it's the magnetic field of wire x that is causing the force so i would need to know that because we're using a straight a straight wire then this is the equation that we use to say that mu naught times I1 divided by 2 pi r. So once you know the current flowing through wire x, and you know the, the distance of separation, which is just from the center of the wire to the next wire, once you know that r distance, which is right here, then you can clearly calculate the magnetic field that wire x has. Good. 
And then now, having said that, if I know the magnetic field, I can now find the force that is experienced on wire Y using the equation that says force is equal to B I L. Since you would have highlighted and found out that B is equal to um, mu naught I1 divided by 2 pi R, then you can then rewrite this to say that the force is equal to mu naught I1, right, divided by 2 pi R times I2 times L, which is just the length of the wire. And then now clearly, we could have found that force. There are times when you will get scenarios where they, where they say, find the force per unit length, right? If they say find the force per unit length on wire Y, all you just need to do is to manipulate this equation so that you have force divided by L, which is what we call the force per unit length. So your force per unit length, force, clearly because L is on this side, right? Then to get it over that side, then you would divide. So you have force per unit length is equal to mu naught i1 times i2 divided by 2 pi r as you can see right here right so that is certain things that you know you you can see from time to time or they might ask you to find that so they might not tell you the, the length of the wire but they tell you to find the force per unit length so you're just saying force divided by length right is equal to such and such okay Similarly, if the, if the current is flowing in opposite direction, we identify that they are going to experience a force of repulsion. So this is typically what is happening here. One current is flowing upwards like this. One is flowing downwards like this. We can take it from this standpoint. Remember we said now that whenever current is flowing into, mind you, I must, I must let you know this. Based on the connection here, so this is your power source. This is the positive terminal, this is the negative terminal. Remember we said that current is flowing from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. Right? So current is flowing from here, going through this wire. You might be wondering which wire the current is going to flow through first. It's going to flow through this one right and it's going to flow up come over and then come back down and then come back through the circuit so that is what is happening here if you're wondering okay so that is what is happening so your current is flowing as such okay now to look at look at it from a different standpoint which is much better for us look at it from a aerial view standpoint right this is what you would come up with. So, clearly this is the current that is flowing out of the paper. So the current coming up like that. Then now the current coming down, right? Because the current is going up on this side through wire X, right? Then you use a dot to show that the current is flowing out. Then now that current, that same current is then flowing back into the paper, which we use an X to represent that, all right? Now we want to know the force that wire Y is going to experience. Clearly, wire Y is within the magnetic field of wire X. So because it's in that magnetic field, then clearly it's going to experience a force. So based on this, we know that the magnetic field caused by wire X is going around like this. If you use your right-hand grip rule, to show you that the current is flowing in a clockwise way. So at this point, we're taking it from an instantaneous standpoint. We're looking at it to say, all right, if at this point where wire Y is located, the magnetic field is going downward, then that shows me that the direction of the magnetic field is directing downward. So grabbing your left-hand rule, your first finger must be pointing 
downward. Now, remember, when current is flowing out of the paper, right, your thumb, not your thumb, but your, your second finger must be coming out like this. So it must be pointing towards you. If you're looking at it from the computer screen, right, it must be coming towards you because we said that once current is coming out, your finger must be pointing outwards of the paper. So at this point, my finger is pointing outwards. My, my, my uh, first finger is pointing downwards. Then clearly I can see that my thumb is pointing across the screen like this. Right, so it shows that this is the, the, the way the wire, that is, the, that is how the wire is going to move. The wire is going to move towards the right. If the wire is moving towards the right, right, according to Newton's third law, for every action is an equal and opposite reaction. So this force is going that way. There's going to be an equal and opposite force going the opposite way. So the force experienced on wire, wire X caused by wire Y is going to go in the opposite direction, equal and opposite. All right? So that, that is something that we, 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 we have to be aware of. All right? Now, we move on to just looking at a simple problem here, right, that says to us, it says to us that two long wires are mounted vertically um, and are four centimeters apart. A current of 2.8 um, amps, right? flows through each current, through each wire, I should say. It says calculate the force acting on, on, a, on a 20 centimeters length of <clears throat> one of the wires, right? In this case, it did not tell you whether the current is flowing in or out, right? But they say it's, it's, it's flowing vertically or the wires are mounted vertically. So this is how the wires are mounted right and clearly current is flowing through it it can either be going in opposite directions but they are the same current so we're going to just work with it to say that they're going in the same direction and we now want to experience we want to find out that force yes this is one way of looking at it we can look at it from this standpoint so we're imagining that the current is flowing out um or into rather let's let's say that the current is flowing into can we say into? Is that the best way to look at it? Um, yeah, let's look at into. So the current is flowing into the paper, right? So we are imagining that the current is flowing into the paper. Good. So this is our paper, right? And we are saying that the current is flowing into the paper. Clearly, we know that each wire right it's going to have its own magnetic field around it and at some point the magnetic field around this wire is going to interact with this wire right here if the current is flowing into using the right hand grip rule from pointing inward then your magnetic field is pointing downwards like this we don't want to necessarily find the direction of the force but we just want to um, quantify it. That's all we want to do. So in order to quantify this, I I must calculate the magnetic field on one of the wires. So I want to know the magnetic field on this wire. Right? I want to know the magnetic field. Because it's a straight wire, I have to use the equation that says D is equal to mu naught times I because i's are the same, then you just clearly can write it to say i1, if you want to call this the, um, wire 1, you can call this wire 2, divided by 2 pi r. Having said this, I believe we know mu as mu has a value of... <laughs> Right, I, I should have had that number here. No, mu is, I know mu is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. I believe it's a minus 7. Yeah, I believe it's minus 7. 
right, times the current, which is 2.8 amps, divide by 2 pi times the, the distance that separates them, all right? So they are 4 centimeters apart. So we just say 0 0.04. Right, when we do work out this, we know that pi and pi cancels out two into four goes two times. So at the end of the day, we we should have a have something like this. We should have a thing to say that two times ten to the minus seven minus seven times two point eight. 2.8 numerator works out to be 5.6 times 10 to the minus 5 divide that by 0 0.04 divide that by 0 0.04 that works out to be that d is equal to um, 1.4 times 10 to the minus 5 tesla so we we we, we now know the b field Right, we now know the B field, so we, we need to find the force. Right, so we know that force is equal to D times I times L. We found out the B field a while ago. Right, the B field had a value of 1.4 times 10 to the minus 5 Tesla times the same current flowing through the second wire. So that is 2.8, right? Multiplied by um, 0 0.2 meters. Your your cal your calculations has to be in SI units, guys. So if we go ahead and multiply 1.4 times 10 to the minus 5 times 2.8 times 0.2, we get a value to say that the force is equal to 7.8. 4 times 10 to the minus 6 um, Newton. Remember now force is a is um a vector quant well force is measured in Newton, so yes, we definitely have to have to state that. Okay. Yes, yeah, so having said that. We, we we have now found out that the force is given to us as such. So we know the force. Yeah. All right. Here's a particular question. Go ahead, take this question, attempt it, and uh, of course, see if you can come up with the answer. All right, um, let me see here. So, you're saying that we need to just draw um, on the diagram, draw arrows um, in uh, one in each case to show the direction um, of the magnetic field at Q due to the current in um, XY. So this is the current flowing through XY, right? And it says label that as B. It says that um, uh, use an arrow to draw the force um, at Q, right, as a result of the magnetic field uh, due to the current, due to the current, lab and label that as F. So take this question and look at it and um, see if we can come up with the the work you know the answer. All right. Okay. This is now another question. Right. In this case. Remember the thing I was showing you about the, the beam balance and so forth. So once current is now flowing through the the, 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 the wire here, 
there's going to be a force exerting down on the, the beam. Based on this, it tells us that the mass that is coming, that is acting down on the, the, the balance has a value of 0.8, right? 0.8 grams. So if you can convert this to kilograms, obviously, and then now um, times it by a gravity constant to find the force, right, experience, exert, ex, um, that is, that the force that the wire is experiencing, because whatsoever force that the wire is exerting, you know, it's, it's that what is reflecting on the scale. That is the reason why we can measure the weight. So whatsoever force is acting, we are actually calculating the weight and, and all of that. Good. Providing that you know the length of the magnetic field, right? I mean, the length of the wire in the magnetic field. So the length of the wire in the magnetic field is 0 0.05 meters. Then I believe you can go ahead and calculate the average magnetic flux density. So read the question and see how we can take it from that standpoint. All right. Now we're going to leave it here. And of course, ensure that you work out this problem and get it back to me. All right.